prevent a gene that just might make you an athlete and prevent heart disease. If we can find out what makes hearts grow, then we can find out perhaps what's also causing strokes and heart attacks. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. It's obvious that some people are just naturally better at sports than others. They can run faster or farther or develop bigger muscles. Why? Well, that and a lot else is determined by our metabolism. Things like breathing, heart rate, blood flow. And our metabolism is determined by our genes, including two variants of a very important gene named ACE. I'm sure the computer would love to tell us about it. Well, Lucky, ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme, a key element of the circulation system that dictates blood pressure. Human beings have two ACE genes, one inherited from each parent. Each of these has variants labeled I or D. There are three possible combinations. The I variant makes less ACE. The D variant makes more. DDs tend to have higher blood pressure, IIs lower. For most people, high blood pressure is undesirable. It is associated with heart disease and stroke. So is there an evolutionary reason that some produce higher levels of ACE than others? Good question. There may have been an adaptive advantage to having high levels of ACE. Roar. If you were unfortunate enough to have had a leg bitten off by a saber-toothed tiger or experienced hemorrhage in childbirth, the increased blood pressure of high ACE level individuals would help them survive. The relationship between ACE and blood pressure has been known for some time. A family of drugs called ACE inhibitors have proved successful in controlling high blood pressure by lowering the levels of ACE in the body. To a doctor at London's University College, those results suggest that something else is going on, too. The death rates were at least halved by the ACE inhibitor, so they were doing something else magical. Um, and no one at that stage knew what that was. Hugh Montgomery's lab is devoted to exploring the genes that affect the heart and its growth. Heart growth itself in disease states is almost universally a bad thing. And the bigger the heart gets, the more likely you are to die. Part of that is explicable by the fact that you've just got an awful lot more heart muscle and it gets a lot of collagen, a lot of scarring between the muscle cells and it seems just to function less well over time. What we can see here is a cardiac MRI of a normal heart. The right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs, but the left ventricle, shown here as this dark ring, has to do all the work of supplying blood to the rest of the body. The left ventricle here is of normal thickness. The MRI of a thickened heart shows just how much more work it has to do to keep the circulation going. And you can see, although the heart is, looks relatively smaller here, this wall of the left ventricle is definitely thicker and is making the cavity, which is full of blood, actually look smaller. If you have a thicker heart muscle, more heart growth, you're much more likely, for instance, to have a heart attack or to get peripheral vascular disease, or kidney failure, or to have a stroke. And we don't know what's connecting those two things. If we can find out what makes hearts grow, then we can find out perhaps what's also causing strokes and heart attacks. Animal studies suggested that the ACE gene had something to do with heart growth. But when it came time to do human studies, the options were limited. The only way in which one could do that was to use the ACE gene as a measure of differences of ACE activity in heart muscle. Because you can't otherwise measure it in a human, you can't go around taking pieces of heart muscle out. But there was another way to approach it. The heart is a muscle, and muscles grow with exercise. What if we could measure the effects of exercise on heart size and match that against their ACE gene expression? Then we'd know whether ACE affects heart growth. Enter the British Army. Two. New Army recruits were the perfect controlled sample for this experiment. They're all roughly the same age, and during their basic training, they live a highly regulated, identical lifestyle. Come on, you're in the Army now. 
Over 12 weeks, the recruits were put through their paces with a combination of strength and endurance training. Okay, just like you to open Samples of DNA were taken from the recruits and sent to the lab in London. In the meantime, the young soldiers continued their training. Their hard and skeletal muscle mass was measured periodically. At first, the results simply seemed to confirm what the researchers were expecting to find. Well, the first thing we identified was um, that we found that the 2D versions of the ACE gene, high ACE activity, was associated with much greater heart growth with exercise. The two I versions of the ACE gene, low ACE activity, associated with much less heart growth. So the study demonstrated that levels of ACE did indeed control heart growth. The recruits with higher levels of ACE build up bigger muscles, including their heart muscles. But the surprising finding was that those with low ACE levels developed much better stamina. At the end of training, we found very dramatic effects. The IIs, the low ACE activity people, had doubled their duration of exercise. And the poor old DDs actually were no better off at the end of 10 weeks of military training than they were at the start. So low ACE activity made your muscles more fatigue resistant. Now these were big findings if you view the heart as the ultimate endurance muscle. And it's got to beat maybe 100 times a minute for let's say hopefully 105 years. Um, not altogether surprising therefore that perhaps low ACE activity is beneficial to the heart as an endurance muscle. And we began to wonder whether in fact that's what ACE inhibitors were doing. They were helping this endurance characteristic of the muscle. Part of the recruits training program involves running a mile and a half at maximum speed. The start of the 12 weeks training and again at the end. Once again the recruits with low ACE activity developed greater endurance and dramatically improved their run times. That means the ACE gene is affecting the entire metabolic system. We can now see there are large advantages to, to low levels of ACE activity. The ACE gene uh, variation will partly explain people's response to exercise, but it's not the gene for exercise performance. 10 dead. 10.02. I think we're a long way off that sort of genetic selection of exercise training. Much better, in fact, to say, well, exercise is good for everybody, and aerobic exercise training is the best sort of exercise and that we should all do it. <coughs> so don't give up the gym membership just yet. In the meantime, we'll keep you updated on further research developments with this two-faced gene. Genetics, confusing, controversial, and always complicated. But that's life. I'm Lucky Severson. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.